Okay, a uh, big video came out earlier today, nine hours ago, from Zenkai Goose, and it's kind of blown up. It's called How World of Warcraft Became Unstoppable, the biggest MMO in the world. I have not played World of Warcraft in three or three and a half months. I haven't streamed it um, outside of our World of Warcraft Donald Trump rally, which some of you guys saw. I feel like I'm kind of on the outside right now. I'm kind of looking in. I feel like I'm free. I've broken my, I've broken my addiction. And now for the first time in a long time, I'm on the outside looking in. So let's see. How did World of Warcraft become the unstoppable MMO beast that it has become? I'm going to be honest. Retail WoW is dead. Yeah, the World of Warcraft is dead. World of Warcraft is dead. WoW uh -oh. is dead. No one plays World of Warcraft. It's dead. True. Warcraft. Stop holding on to it. It's WoW is just actively getting worse. World of Warcraft true, is one true, of the true, longest true, lasting true. most popular games in the world that people couldn't get. Real quick, to piggyback on that point, one of the huge reasons why I have not been playing World of Warcraft for the last three or three and a half months is because I have no faith in the classic dev team. I think the classic dev team is largely incompetent. Maybe they have one or two. Maybe they have a handful of people that, are, that genuinely know what they're doing, but... I, I really think that they are kind of blindly throwing darts at the dartboard. I think they really don't have a direction, and I don't have faith in them to make a good Classic Plus or or a good season of Discovery Phase Six, Seven, Eight, Nine, Ten, whatever. And so it's it's kind of it's kind of hard for me to be invested in the game when I feel like um, the people facilitating the game really are just like totally clueless. And that's how I feel. And there are more reasons than that. It's a more more complex topic than that. Why I have not been playing. But that's 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 a huge part of it, frankly. That's a big part of it. And enough of World of Warcraft, I need to play! Yet since it released, it's been predicted to fail year after year after year. Make wow great again. But how can a game True. that got 10 expansions in 20 years, over 12 million people's credit cards to play every single month, and the world's biggest Hollywood stars completely addicted? be dying on the topic oh. of your world of warcraft obsession at what point did you realize that you were in too deep and needed to quit cold turkey when my agent would sign on to talk to me according to the sales world of warcraft her hollywood agent would have to log into world of warcraft and send her a whisper to get her to respond okay that's actually funny I didn't hear that from dead. That's good. So I wanted to learn how it was somehow able to survive decades while newer quadruple A games could barely make it a week. I okay. mean, this one didn't even make it a day. The crew is gathering. Would you like to join us for game night? But to find Blizzard's Concord. real secret, Woo. we'd have to go back to the beginning. 20 years ago now, 2004. Yes. Oh no, Warcraft yes. 1, we're going back even further. Actually, that's probably a little too far back, isn't it? Yes. One sec. I'm gonna give a hot take here, okay? Warcraft 2 is actually the best game in the entire Warcraft IP. Yeah, Warcraft, Warcraft 2 is better than Warcraft 3. Warcraft 2 is better than Vanilla WoW. Warcraft 2, Warcraft 2 is the best. It is the best. Second. It's so good. There we go. But obviously this isn't World of Warcraft. And that's because to truly understand WoW, we need to talk about EverQuest, a massively multiplayer online EverQuest. fantasy game that Blizzard employees couldn't get enough of. See, for most of us in the 90s, multiplayer meant split screen on GoldenEye, no odd mm -hmm. jobs allowed. But EverQuest that's didn't right. feel like multiplayer, it felt like a home. Which gives the guys at Blizzard an More idea. High. You see, they were such huge fans of EverQuest that they could see all the problems the game had. For example, if a player died, they'd have to walk all the way back to their body without any of their gear to protect them. Or if they were killed yep. by another player, that player could take one of their hard earned items to keep forever. And regardless of how the player died, their experience would drop for every death. It was super Meaning if hardcore. you put yourself in a tricky situation, this you was could a lose game for hours, if not days of experience. Mm -hmm. So while developing Warcraft 3, Blizzard decides it's time they craft their own MMO. It'd be a new world filled with wars that they this could is call Alan their Adam, own. I think, right? Sure, some folks called it strategic inspiration, but most folks called it... Well, like, okay, I'm gonna say something, man. If you're a product designer or if you're a game designer, if you are not learning from or taking, ste copying, stealing, maybe, incorporating good design elements from other games from your competitors like you are doing something wrong right like you, you you should be trying to learn from the mistakes and also learn from the successes of your competitors you sh you should do that that's a smart thing to do 
Now at this point, Blizzard's just released three of the world's greatest games within half the time Grand Theft Auto That's 6 right. has been in development. Dude, the, like these days, young people especially have no idea. There, there was probably like a 10 year period between, God, like probably 2000, sorry, like 1995 and like 2005. Bl like Blizzard was the go. Like Blizzard was unstoppable. Probably, actually, it's probably a little bit wider than that. Even uh, a little bit of a wider time frame. That is, Blizzard was the go. They were. They had the golden touch. Everything they. Everything they did was the best. Half it the is time, true. Grand Theft Auto true. Six has been in development. Look, I don't know what was in the water at Blizzard, but it was clearly working. Because when you saw a game with this logo on it, it basically guaranteed you yep. were getting a Ratatouille moment. Yep. And World of Warcraft was no different because everyone was playing it. We're, yep. we're, we're fans. We are. I am an orc um, shaman. Isn't this that famous actress from The Devil Wears Prada, whatever her name is? She played WoW? Are you kidding me? And, and Tom is an orc, orc warrior. You see, Blizzard's oh really God. good at one Jamie thing Lee most Curtis. game developers seem to ignore. I didn't know that. Where everyone else seeks to over-design new concepts or ideas, Blizzard does the exact opposite, seeking to simplify what already works. Really opening up what had been a relatively niche genre to the broader audience of right. gamers from all walks of life. For example, in World of Warcraft, players were split into two morally gray factions of Alliance or Horde, with each faction getting their own play. Um, here's the thing. The factions are not morally gray. The Alliance is good, and the Horde is bad. There's no gray. It's white and black. Playable races building on the tribal nature yep. humans already have. You see, for the Alliance, you could play as night elves, gnomes, dwarves, or humans. Ah. Whereas the Horde had cows that turned to cats, religious hulks, Jamaican avatar people with tusks, yep. and what I could only describe as people who comment skill issue. That's you right. know who you are. But they go That's further right. by fixing every problem mm -hmm. they found in EverQuest so that their game would be as accessible as possible. I'm gonna tell you, bro, listen, now now that I now that I'm not playing WoW, I can actually be honest with my true feelings. If you play Undead, if you are an unironic undead player, you are a goddamn basement dwelling fucking shit sock shitting piss jug pissing indoor smoking you're spitting in an empty coke can you are a goddamn degenerate you're smearing feces on the walls okay like a goddamn monkey okay you are a freak if you are an undead man i'm telling you bro well for anyone to for play. real you can't go to the bathroom you're stacking sunder armor iconic warcraft characters would be interacted with to gain quests that subtly progress players through new locations dying was no longer a scary nightmare of penalties because you could be returned to your body as an invincible ghost and mounts were provided to make going from place Ooh. to place the greatest thing ever but That's that right. wasn't all because WoW built in social Leroy features Jenkins. from the start, so raiding a dungeon or making friends was as easy as possible. Hey. Hey. Well, also, like, World of... This is something people forget. World of Warcraft, at the time that it came out, 4, 5, 2006, 2007, this is an era kind of before social media websites became prominent. You didn't have Discord either, okay? And so World of Warcraft general chat trade chat, guild chat, these were effectively early proto social media like locations or uh, uh, what, what, what's it called. But yeah, like, like, like people would log into Stormwind just to hang out and talk. Like, like you would sit in general chat or trade chat or b the legendary Baron's chat, whatever, just not even playing the game. You would just sit there and talk and shitpost for like four hours. That was super common. Now, a lot of that discussion has been, uh, you know, outsourced to Twitter or Discord or Facebook or like whatever, right? But it was a different era back then. However, with all that success came a few problems. Uh -oh. A lot of those first months were spent really just trying to keep up with demand, just trying to stabilize the service to get to a point where players could just come home from work, log in and not have to wait or not have yep. their servers be down due to a lot of downtime Because unlike back then. their previous games, World of Warcraft was a 24 seven, always online world. Millions of people were paying to work every single month including really powerful people like Superman. You were home, but you were playing 
oh. World of Warcraft, and the phone rings, and you're like, I'll get that later? Oh, get, yeah, yeah. Yeah, unless you had a few yep. kryptonite bullets hanging around, downtime busy. was not an option. Now, for context, this game took a... Man, he's just like me, because I remember one time my mom told me that I need to do my homework and take out the garbage, and I said, uh-uh-uh, mom. I'm like Henry Cavill. I'm having a Henry Cavill gamer moment. You need to leave me alone. You need to leave me alone, mom. I'm gaming. Eight years, 169 people, and like Cavill we said moment. earlier, barely made it a day with the backing of a billion dollar Sinister Six obsessed company. What? So to keep up with new content, maintenance, customer support, and bug fixing, the WoW team had to be massive. But no. No. Nope. Because somehow they made the entire game with 40 people. 40. Okay. I'm just going to say this, you can make awesome legendary games as big as Vanilla WoW, as big as World of Warcraft with a team of 40 people. If the people you have on the team are competent and hired, they are hired and promoted internally based off of meritocratic principles. Now, if they are hired based off of various, um, you know, diversity quotas, your product is probably not going to be as good, okay? Because these these are these are quotas that are undermining the meritocratic process, right? Yeah, DEI equals DIE. Yes. So naturally, Blizzard employees were feeling a little pressure. Mm -hmm. Sure, a massive world with accessible gameplay players could socialize in was part of the reason for World of Warcraft's longevity, but keeping the game up and running for millions of people to play any second of the day? Yeah, that seemed like something they needed to solve. Ooh, TBC. After three exhausting years, Blizzard hired a ton of new devs, fixed a ton of problems, and now morale's a lot higher. Sort of. Okay. But with this expansion, Blizzard's feeling confident that they know exactly why players love World of Warcraft. Do you remember midnight releases? Remember going to GameStop or Fry's or whatever for a midnight release? Dude, man. You don't have that anymore. It's not a thing. No one does that anymore. Because with the Burning Crusade, they add two new playable races right out the gate. High Fantasy Blood Elves for the Horde and what look like Space Goats for the Alliance. The game gets the level cap bumped from 60 to 70 and flying mounts are added for the very first time. Yeah, no, we had to figure out how to let We don't like flying fly. mounts. Except what's most we interesting do not is like Blizzard flying does something mounts. new Boo. that pushes the game to the next level. You see, Warcraft 3 was beloved by everyone who played it, specifically because of its story and amazing characters. So in this expansion, they bring back one of those amazing characters, Illidan frickin' Stormrage. I mean, just look at that guy. He's the king of the incels. He's the ultimate chud. He looks freaking goose-tastic. But yes. that's not all, because they also make getting to the expansion's new zone a historic event. You see, this was back when World of Warcraft was a full-time job. So the day that the expansion hits, players from all over the world collectively take a sick day to gather around this portal. The Dark Portal. Yep. What are your symptoms? Mm -hmm. I'm feeling nauseous and my head's going. And the beauty of the dark portal. Dude, I used to skip so much school, elementary school and high school to play World of Warcraft. And I would always lie about being sick. Okay, yeah, I was a bad student. I'll tell you what, though. I was never sick on a Tuesday. Never was I sick on a Tuesday. You know why? Tuesday was patch day. It was server maintenance day. What's the point in, in lying and, and skipping school if the servers are going to be down for 10 hours? Uh, I'll just go to school, whatever. Like, I have to go sometime. Might as well do it on Tuesday. I was never one sick on Tuesday. It was the second that the expansion released. It'd be open for everyone to experience at the same time. It didn't matter if you were a blood elf or a space goat. Everyone was going to Outland to stop Illidan and the Burning Legion. Quite frankly, Hell when the yeah. Burning Legion hit store shelves, everyone's nine to five job went through the same existential crisis. <laughs> I'm in danger. Because it sells 2.4 million copies in the first day and hits a new milestone of 10 million actively paying subscribers. Look, I'm no mathematician, but that seems like a lot of what Mr. Krabs would call money 
Somehow of money. Blizzard mm -hmm. topped the original World of Warcraft in what looked like every way possible. There was more to do, more to earn, more to seek, more to explore. From the there, there's a there's another thing we need to acknowledge about WoW back in the day. Like this this is still early in the days of online gaming. Okay, this is now it's 2007. TBC is out. Vanilla WoW is 04 to 06 or early January 2007. There weren't many other options. Okay, so n like not only was World of Warcraft in its early days really genuinely so good, but it's also like it didn't have a whole lot of serious competition. You know what I mean? You had RuneScape, which I, I love RuneScape personally, actually, but you had EverQuest, but like n nothing, nothing else was on World of Warcraft's level as like as far as content, but also polish. Nothing else was there with it. It was just so obviously, let's be honest, it was just so obviously superior to pretty much everything else that was out there. Outside looking in, it looked like World of Warcraft would be safe so long as it focused on expanding the world with great characters players could rally towards. But if that's really all it took, then the real question was, could they do it again? Oh my god, they did it again. They did it again, but they did it even better. Oh my god, they did it. Yes, okay, 1000% yes, like it's not even a question. <laughs> yeah. Releasing a year after they the Burning it. Crusade, Blizzard triples down on everything that worked before. Dude, I, I, I still remember the first time I saw this cinematic. Do you guys remember the first time you saw this cinematic? This cinematic, it was like life-changing. This was the this was the most badass thing. I mean, it still is, but like imagine imagine I was twelve or something, twelve, and you need to get in the in the in the you need to get in the mindset. You grew up playing Warcraft two, Warcraft three, Arthas, the Lich King. These are unsolved stories. Warcraft three, the Frozen Throne ends with Arthas climbing to the top of the Frozen Spire, and then he sits there and he freezes over in his throne. And then you play World of Warcraft for four or five years, vanilla and TBC. And always in the back of my young head, I'm 10, 11, 12, 13, whatever, I'm playing vanilla. I'm playing TBC. I'm thinking, dude, remember the Lich King from Warcraft three, Frozen Throne? Where is he? He's somewhere in this huge world. Like he's he's out there. Dude, what's going on? And Sargeras and the Burning Legion, they had the world felt so big because you had all of these unsolved mysteries, right? And then this cinematic hits. After fantasizing and daydreaming about the Lich King for four years, right? Then you see this, and it's like, whoa. Here it is. This is what he's been doing. Whoa. First, Blizzard drops a CG trailer that's quite frankly a better movie than what most streaming services put out today. That's like, right. Like it's been over a decade since this thing dropped and it I still epic. go back to rewatch it. Next, they go back to Warcraft 3 one more time to make Arthas the expansion's next villain, who, mm -hmm. just to be clear, is Warcraft's most popular character by far. Probably no the greatest, most notorious My villain king. ever introduced in Warcraft. And that's because in Warcraft 3, you got to play as Arthas and watch him slowly transform from a humble prince reigning in chaos. Can the formalities, Uther. I'm not king yet. To the lich. Dude, Warcraft 3 Reforged looks like shit. Look at this. Gross. Yet. To the Lich King reclaiming Ugh. his frozen throne. Like seriously, the story of Arthas is pretty much Breaking Bad, but in the Warcraft universe. You're goddamn right. Wrath of the Lich King wasn't just another expansion, it was Blizzard proving they knew exactly why players love World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. But don't just take my word for it. Wrath of the Lich King is probably my favorite expansion. Like straight up, without a question. Ooh. Is the best. The classes are way better. Version. Just infinitely more fun for me to play. Of the expansion is that good. ever came out. It was good. Yeah, Wrath was an awesome time. And I mean, who could blame them? There was just so much love in this expansion. It was an honor to be able to come work on the team to help shape the game that I'd loved for so long. Because they add this new Death Knight hero class any faction can play as. A very, very small memory here. I don't know. Maybe you guys can remember this. When Wrath first got announced, and they also announced the Death Knight. Announcing the new hero, it's a hero class, the Death Knight. And they had the little video where the paladin 
you know, he's walking through the snow with the priest. The priest dies at the top of the hill. The Yeti gets her, and then the paladin is walking through the forest, and then he gets surrounded by all the undead creatures, and then he arises as a death knight. You remember the video. Nobody had any idea what, what is a hero class. What does that mean? How do we... How, do you have to unlock Death Knight? Do you just get to make a Death Knight? What, how does it work? For a good three or four months, there was a rumor, there was a conspiracy that you had to have a max level Paladin and then your Paladin through some in-game process would become a Death Knight. You would, have to, you would have to convert a Paladin into a Death Knight, okay? And honestly, that would have been really cool. Like, I kind of wish that they did that. But I remember very clearly, I actually leveled up a Paladin all through TBC or like... like Early TBC, I played Mage and then Warlock. At the end of TBC, when Wrath got announced, I actually started leveling up a Paladin because everybody, there was like a huge wave of people leveling Paladins. I was one of them because I wanted to make a Death Knight. And so I leveled up a Paladin all the way up to max level just so I could convert him to a Death Knight. And then that, and then you ended up not, not needing to do that. That would have been really cool though. That would have been so badass. A more customizable dual specialization skill tree to help players build their character exactly as they wanted. It started as how do I save action bars and it turned into what it is now. And build new phasing technology so everyone could immerse themselves seamlessly uh, in live cinematic quests. This revolutionized right. the way people played the game and it remains a linchpin of the game for the past 10 years. And all this combined made Blizzard's biggest expansion ever, selling 2.8 million copies in just 24 hours and driving WoW subscriptions to an all-time peak of 12 million people. people are picking up their purchase and it was around this time, if you went to the store and you were gonna buy a game box for World of Warcraft, what did it have on the box? It had a golden sticker. It was a golden star, a golden sticker, and it said, over 12 million subscribers. A golden sticker, over 12, and it was like, dude, yeah, this game is popping. This game is popping. This is so they can race home and plug in the game. Chances are this is the last time you're gonna see them for quite a while. Like for context, that's more than the entire population of Sweden, okay? Which clearly implies that Blizzard's got a lot Sweden more. Sweden blowing the fuck out. But Blizzard creates a new problem that mm -hmm. even technology couldn't solve. You see, Arthas wasn't just any other villain, because his story started all the way back in Warcraft 3 and was foreshadowed through much of World of Warcraft. He well, okay, just to be clear, Arthas is not a villain. Arthas literally never did anything wrong. You can make the argument that the Lich King is a villain, the Lich King did something wrong. Yeah, sure, we can have that conversation. Every single thing Arthas did prior to becoming the Lich Thing totally made sense, and I fully endorse it. All of it. Everything Arthas did was objectively the right decision. He'd always been there, sitting on his throne with what is probably the coolest sword known to man. But after beating Arthas, is. his story and it a is. huge part of what made Warcraft so special was gone. If World of Warcraft was going to carry on, Blizzard would need to fill the giant void Arthas left behind. But I mean, what do you do after six years of setup for the Lich King? I mean, are you going to send some giant dragon with anger issues out of nowhere to completely destroy the entire planet? <laughs> yes. That'd just be stupid. They, that's what they did. It was stupid. Well, okay then. Apparently that's exactly what they do. However, mm -hmm. during development of World of Warcraft's third expansion, Blizzard gets acquired by one Activision CEO. Bob Look how cute he is. Look at how cute and innocent he is. How are, how, how are people going to be mad at him? Look at him. He's so cute. He's like a little puppy. He's like a little baby kitten. Bobby Coded. Can't be Our mad at that face. to bring joy and fun <laughs> to people around the world. Now, for the next 20 seconds, I have no choice but to speed run you through the corporate nightmare that is Activision Blizzard. So bear with me because I promise you this is important to World of Warcraft's future. All right, so in 1991, Blizzard becomes a real company through the power of friendship. Then in 95, a company whose only talent seems to be buying other companies buys Blizzard. Yep. But when we hit the 2000s, Easy. Bobby's company, Activision, starts making gazillions by spamming the ever-loving bejesus out of their franchises. Good, the We're talking game. your Spider-Man, your Guitar Heroes, your yep. Happy Meal toys, and of course, your Call of Duties. You know, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be an Activision apologist here for a minute. In 2007 or 2008, Activision was goaded. 
I'm just going to say it. They were, they were pumping out call the call of duty franchise was in its glory days. This is guitar hero. Like these, these were, these were also the glory days of Activision. Everybody loved Activision back then. It's true. Tony Hawk, the skater. Yeah, sure. They're yeah. Off. Except if you look closely, you'll notice that none of those franchises have an MMO that specializes in what Bobby wants most. Money. Now this makes Bobby want money. mad. So in 2008, he merges with the Talentless Company to get all of their companies and renames the new company to Activision Blizzard. Yes. And now you're probably wondering what the big money. deal is. Well, as of 2008, nothing. I'll be honest, nothing really happens. But as of 2010, World of Warcraft's next expansion starts to move the game in a different direction. Now on the positive side, having Deathwing the, the giant murder direction. dragon blow up Azeroth turned out to be a really good in-world excuse to modernize a few zones and completely refresh others. In doing- The Cataclysm world update was catastrophic for this game. Catas catastrophic. It was terrible. All of the new zones suck. They all of them, they all suck. And so it creates a more welcoming suck. environment for new players to join in and not feel lost from six years of content. Also, they give the horde goblins to play as, and then they give the alliance freaking werewolves. So I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of in. I mean, who doesn't like werewolves, right? <laughs> I don't. But Blizzard's goal to make the game more friendly for newcomers came with a few unexpected problems. They streamlined raid matchmaking, allowing anyone to just press a button to find a group, which mm -hmm. sounds great on paper, but in practice caused newer players unknowingly disrupting what were already impossible raids. Well, like at a, at a very basic level, this this is what has happened with World of Warcraft over the years. Okay, um, if you've got your old normal kind of standard IQ, bell curve, normal distribution chart, traditionally World of Warcraft has been appealing. Well, okay, like, actually, you know what? This is the best way to put it, okay? V Vanilla WoW, I should, I should make this a circle rather than a square. Vanilla WoW was targeted. And obviously, you know, maybe I'm a little bit biased, sure. Vanilla WoW was targeted and catered towards savant geniuses genius savants and then tbc kind of shifted that circle a little bit over here wrath kind of shifted the circle over here and then by the time you get to kata you know it keeps on shifting to the left but you know this makes sense as a from a business or money making point of view if you want to make the most money as po as mo as much money as you possibly can and have the largest player base that you possibly can. You want to appeal to the masses. You want to appeal to the normies, to the normies, to the average folk, to the layman. Like you don't want the game to be too difficult mechanically. And you also don't want the game to take up too much time. Not everybody has all day to play the game and not everybody can play the game at a super high level. So you need to make a product that appeals to average everyday folk, right? And I, I, think, I think to some degree, that has happened. That has been an intentional design choice, I think so. And sure, they wiped the narrative slate clean with Deathwing's angry fire, but that just caused the connection to the story to feel like it came out of nowhere. Mm. And surprisingly, the problem with the biggest repercussions? What's that? Came from the in-game mounts. StarCraft II Wings of Liberty made less money than the first Sparkle Pony horse in World of Warcraft. That is insane that is almost impossible to believe so that so that like uh it was called the celestial steed was the first in-game uh, shop mount and it came out like halfway through wrath of Witch king or something like that right a 15 dollars microtransaction horse made more money than starcraft not 2. this one yeah and unsurprisingly this left a lot of fans with foresight wow. for the future feeling salty money in best mount in the game I don't even care. I don't even care. This is why he went bald. This this video is the video because listen, like if if you if you dump a bunch of salt into a field of grass, all the grass is gonna die. Okay? Grass don't like salt. Same for hair. If you dump a bunch of salt into a into a head, into a hairline, the hairline is gonna disappear. Hairline don't like salt. That's what happened. This makes me mad.
See, previously you'd buy World of Warcraft and the expansion, pay a monthly sub, and away you went. I'm excited. Very excited. This, albeit an unintuitive strategy, financially incentivized Blizzard to make great content because if they didn't, then no one would buy the expansion, which of course would put them in a lot of trouble. Except with this new microtransaction based strategy, that oh was no God. longer the case. Oh because if they God. were able to make something in five minutes with Look one person thing. that outsold something that takes an entire department to make in seven years well i don't want to live on this i mean like here's here's the problem man is that artists are not incentivized to create beautiful genius art anymore because it's it's not as lucrative creating genius masterpiece level art leonardo da vinci style art there's not as much money as making you know another shitty rap song about you know, fucking bitches or like whatever, like there, there's no, there's no profit motive. And so we're talking about making games here, making the, making the stupid mount in game that you sell for $15 makes way more money than Starcraft 2 Wings of Liberty. I would consider Wings of Liberty to be a, to be a piece of art. Wings of Liberty is a really good game. I, I was going to say Wings of Liberty is the last masterpiece game that Blizzard created. Uh, but you, like, you have Hearthstone, Overwatch, those games weren't, no, you know what? Wings of Liberty is an 11 out of 10 game, and it, it was the, it was the very last 11 out of 10 game they made. Even if, even if you like Hearthstone or Overwatch, those were 9 out of 10 games, maybe 10 out of 10 if it's kind of your genre. Wings of Liberty was an 11 out of 10 game. It was so good. It was the, and this is 2011. Blizzard has not made a game like that in 13 years. A game that is that good. It was so good. This planet anymore. Regardless, Cataclysm sold a record-breaking 3.3 million copies in a single day and regained 10 of the 12 million subscribers that Arthas gave Blizzard. So technically, World of Warcraft was safe. Let me go home and put a heck out of this thing. But when Hell we look yeah. closer, we can see players weren't as satisfied as they once were. Nope. Sure, Azeroth was completely revamped, but no one really experienced it necessarily. Yeah, the revamp Players sucks. just sort of logged in and... Oh, I guess I spawn here now. Also, the whole murder dragon that just... Well, it's like, you know, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna revamp an entire world of content that you actually don't need to interact with because all the content that is revamped is 1 to 80 and you are 80 and all you have to do is get to 85. So yeah, if you're gonna level an alt, yeah, sure, but it's like, like most people didn't really even need to experience it if the, unless they really wanted to. It was just kind of kind of a weird dynamic, right? Destroys the entire planet narrative? It just kind of fizzles out like a Disney movie, which like it, it isn't even a bit. It straight up has the same castle and firework ending. <laughs> you are Azeroth's true guardians. And yeah. the future of this world this sucks. is in your hands. This sucks. <sighs> Who greenlit that? But let's be real, okay? After amazing expansions like Burning Crusade or the Wrath of the Lich King. Feels great. <laughs> players were fine tolerating a so-so expansion. I've been waiting long enough. Ten and a half hour shift of work. Six hour wait for the game. It's a good day. Because they knew yeah. Blizzard was cooking the next big expansion with awesome characters who used crazy magic, wielded the sickest swords, or whatever the heck Green Jesus is apparently capable of. You see, after taking down Benedict Cumberbatch, the world was hyped for whatever insane, muscle-bound, fire-breathing Warcraft setting Blizzard was cooking. Here next. it comes. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah. We went we went right from a very very disappointing and unsatisfying end to Cataclysm and it really is a pretty shitty raid tier and it it just drug on forever into mo into mop into the mop cinematic. Is this actually the game? Yeah. It is. Okay, so apparently pandas are in. Yeah. No, they're not. No. No. Now, while this is 1,000% a curveball, Miss of Pandaria came... Dude, you know what's... You know what's nuts about Mr. Pandaria? Blizzard was, I mean, they said this, they were very intentionally trying to target and cater to the Chinese audience. They realized there's a lot of people in China. Chinese players seem to love World of Warcraft. 
we're going to make an expansion for them. And so you know, it's like the year is like 2010 or 2011. They're sitting around. It's a bunch of Blizzard World of Warcraft developers sitting around a boardroom table. And they're, and they're okay, if you guys have a good idea about this new expansion targeted at Chinese people, just say it out loud. Uh, okay, Chinese people, they like uh, pandas. Uh, okay, good idea. Write that down. Uh, Chinese people, they love big walls. They love walls over there. Okay, we're going to put that in the game. They love uh, noodles. They love noodles. Okay, we're going to have a noodle. Okay, they love... Uh, and it's like, bro, what? Like, dude, this is... <laughs> this is nuts. They love kung fu. They love monks and kung fu and shit. And long uh, serpentine dragons. Yeah, put that in there. It's like, uh, okay, it's like borderline racist. I don't know, maybe. Who cares? Impact with a surprising amount of goodies. First off, Master Shifu is beyond thrilled. Next, the game adds the Pandarin as a faction fluid playable race capable yeah. of using the new monk class, which is a first for the series. They center the game's theme around Chinese culture and architecture that quite frankly looks incredible. And lastly, they add a Pokemon. I'm I, okay, I'm gonna be honest, man. I am a Western culture chauvinist. I I really don't, dude. It's so weird because I was born in Japan and I've spent a lot of time in Taiwan and Korea and Japan and I've been to Asia multiple times. I'm not looking to play a video game uh, that has Japanese architecture. Like it's just not really my thing or Chinese architecture. I just don't really that. And I don't watch anime either. That art style just doesn't really do anything for me. It doesn't get me going. Just don't care about it. Don't care. No. On pet battle system. It's got to be, so it's got to be Tolkien-esque, Lord of the Rings style, Western fantasy. That's what I like. That I'm sorry. If that makes me a racist, whatever. I guess I'm racist. That's how I like it. Lord of the Rings style. Okay. Derivative of Lord of the Rings. Keep it within that realm. That's how I love it. To look it's the best. What it would look like. This is just a mock-up. Yeah, this sucks. Based on Western culture, let's go. Okay, I won't lie, the new direction is a little surprising, but it looks like it technically still works. I mean, the expansion sells 2.7 million copies in just a week and returns the sub count right back to 10 million. So yeah, Miss of Pandaria is technically a success. But if you're like me, you might be wondering why the heck Blizzard would go from something like this to this. The pet battle system takes all pets and merges them into a Pokemon-like system of turn-based combat, collection, and leveling. Well, it turns out North America wasn't yeah. the only one who loved World of Warcraft. Because yeah. when you look at the subscription data, you can see China accounted for a huge piece of that pie. With that That's in mind, right. the idea That's to right. embrace Chinese culture starts making a ton of sense. And in fairness, pandas were technically a thing in Warcraft 3. I bring pandemonium! Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, they were kind of awesome. <laughs> No, they weren't. This was a dumb, like, micro little, like, bonus thing after the campaign. It was like a gag. It was like an April Fool's style gag, right? It was like a dumb joke. And then people say, oh, well, technically they're part of the universe. Like, oh, my God. Oh. And even if they are, even if they are, do we need to have an entire expansion centered around them? Kobolds are a part of the universe. Do we need to have an entire kobold expansion? You know what? Actually, kind of that is what uh, the War Within is. Now that I think about it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dude, it's it's no wonder World of Warcraft is dying. This game sucks. They are creatively bankrupt now. Oh, my God. We actually have the Kobold expansion. Okay. <laughs> However, even though this expansion had a lot of interesting features, it also marked the beginning of a bigger shift in Blizzard's design. The game was now more accessible, more vibrant, and more colorful. They looked at it and said, this isn't the Warcraft I know. The Warcraft I know is about orcs and humans and dragons. And true. this feels like a different game. This feels almost childish. It supported more yes, gimmicky features yes, like the true. pet battle system meant to bring in a newer, younger audience. I feel like they just kind of gave it a theme to attract more players that are new to the game, but it's not so much for experience players that are already in it. And that monetization train? Nice. Well, it didn't seem to be slowing down any time soon. 
Make no mistake, Mists of Pandaria seems to be a solid oh. expansion by all accounts, but its direction seemed to be drifting World of Warcraft further away from what appealed to the core fans. It's over. Like nobody, I don't know a single person that's saying, oh pandas, I'm gonna play this game for the pandas. A mistake it's Hollywood over. forced Blizzard to fix in the next expansion. This cinematic here for Warlords of Draenor is one of the biggest jebates you got jebated of all time. Because this cinematic really was pretty cool. It was good. It looked great. And then... We are halfway through World of Warcraft's expansion and it looks like this one's going to be a big return to what made Warcraft Warcraft. I mean, look at this trailer. We will never be slaves! Yeah. It's packed with so much yeah. testosterone that even Joe Rogan wants in on it. <laughs> now this Whoa, change oh clearly God. worked because War Joe Rogan is probably one of he's 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 gotta be like half orc. Joe Rogan is probably injecting orc steroids. Or he has maybe himself drank the blood of Manoroth. I'm not sure. Lords of Draenor sells a record breaking 3.3 million mm. copies in a single day and brings those juicy subscriptions right back up to 10.5 million players. Nice. 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 So nice. Blizzard's got to be feeling pretty good, right? Well, not exactly. You see, World of Warcraft started getting so huge that around this time, Hollywood's working on an official movie. And to capitalize on all of that player hype, that movie yeah! sucked. they decide to set that movie in a date and time 90% of players were completely unaware of. All they had to do. All they had to do was do the Arthas trilogy. Just do the Arthas trilogy trilogy the story of Arthas that's it that's all that's all how do you not do that it's so it was right in front of them so to help fans unaware of the movie's incredibly strange timeline choice know. Blizzard sets this expansion in an alternate timeline 35 years in the past Lame. that's right somehow World of Warcraft the fantasy game now has time travel well, I mean, you know, technically it always did. By the way, the entire the entire storyline with the bronze dragon flight, the infinite dragon flight, the caverns of time, it sucked. Every everything the bronze dragon flight has ever been involved with or the caverns of time has sucked. It should not be in the game. Time travel should not be in the game. Chromie sucks, Nosdormu sucks, Caverns of Time sucks, it all sucks. It all sucks. Shouldn't have been there. Okay? What's wrong with you? So, quick recap. At this point in World of Warcraft story, you've stopped Illidan, Arthas, Smaug, and you've imprisoned some new orc war chief, Garrosh Hellscream, for being kind of evil. Well, in this expansion, Garrosh magically escapes and somehow travels back in time to stop his dad, Gramosh Hellscream, heck of a name by the way, from drinking this demon blood and also turning evil. Mm -hmm. And together, as definitely not evil people, the two team up to build the Iron Horde in order to take over Azeroth. Now, yep. do you have Good any idea evil, how much World of Warcraft lore I had to read to find out why a giant bald orange orc man was capable of using time travel in a world that looked like Middle Earth? Just don't think the about it. Because the answer was too much. Don't think about it. And what's worse is, it doesn't even seem to matter. This makes me mad. Because everything yep. about this expansion yep. seems to just implode on itself with barely any content causing subscription numbers to fall off a freaking cliff. So terrible. in fear of losing more subscribers, Blizzard just decides to give up halfway. Dude, what is the point of having a cubicle if you can look over the cubicle wall? Why would you even... What the hell? Dude, this would drive me nuts. But, oh, I'm losing my mind. Blizzard just decides to give up halfway through and focus on the next expansion. Which like, okay, sure, but yep, now like on. me, you're probably wondering what the heck this expansion even did. Well, it updates the character models to look less nightmare and brings the magic of The Sims games to World of Warcraft. Now, real quick, something else happened around Warlords of Draenor. It was about halfway through Warlords of Draenor 
something happened. Something stupendous happened. It was the birth of a movement. Wad was actually so incredibly bad. This is when the Vanilla WoW No Changes movement began. Now, there had been private servers for a long time prior to this, really for a long time, but this is when there was a colossal mass exodus from the official Blizzard servers because what people were so unhappy with WAD and they were looking for something else. And what did they find? They found a server. It was very right place, right time, right movement. WAD was so bad, like sort of the, the stars aligned. Nostalrius. It was Nostalrius. And this is, this is when, when everything kind of changed. Craft through a new base building feature that they call Garrisons. A garrison yeah. was a persistent space of your own in the world that you could customize as you saw fit. Because wow. as you can probably tell, people who like this... I'm coming up with 32.33, uh, repeating of course, percentage of survival. And people who like this... <laughs> would Love clearly it. be the same person. Love it. Also, for roughly the same price as the expansion itself, players can now pay to boost any character to level 90 or buy in-game gold, which is the game's currency. With real money... And so this, this is like the unspoken implication of having leveling boosts in the game. If you can buy a leveling boost, the implicit message is, hey, player base, we acknowledge that our leveling process is so boring or at least so inconsequential that it doesn't matter that we're willing to let you bypass it. We acknowledge it's it, it, it just has no meaning, so we're going to let you pay to skip it, right? Whereas long ago in the ancient days of Vanilla WoW or TBC or whatever, leveling was supposed to be a formative journey. Uh, it, during this process, you're learning how to play your character, and it's also supposed to be fun. You're exploring the world. You're getting acquainted to the universe. You're seeing other players. It's a social experience, right? And now it's like, well, yeah, mm, it doesn't matter. We acknowledge it doesn't matter. It's really of no benefit, so we're just going to let you pay to bypass it now using a new currency called Sox. the WoW token. It's a way for players to exchange with each other time for in-game currency. I fundamentally love yeah. when games add yeah. multiple levels of currency to their game. It's always a great sign. Always. Because why play years of critically acclaimed content when you can just buy your way through with zero context of what's- The WoW, the WoW token- Actually, ha The WoW token makes World of Warcraft definitively pay to win, right? I want you to imagine a concept here. If you have infinite gold in World of Warcraft, which is what a WoW token allows you to have if you have infinite real life money, if you have enough gold, you can purchase everything, right? You could purchase a rank one gladiator boost. If you have enough gold, you could buy you could buy a mythic plus carry mythic boost. You could, you could pay to have a spot in a mythic raiding guild. You could pay, buy any piece of loot you want. So yeah, gold really is insanely power. Gold is really powerful in World of Warcraft, probably too power, too powerful of a currency. As far as currencies go, gold probably is too liquid or too powerful. And now you can buy it. Whereas before, before the WoW token, yeah, you had third-party gold-selling sites. They were kind of sketchy. You were also scared that you were going to get banned for doing it. And people did get banned back in the day for buying gold, much more than they do today. And then also, um, you know, it was like incredibly taboo. There was social ostrac ostrac ostracization if you were buying gold. It was... Uh, it wasn't directly shoved in your face by the developer of the game themselves saying, hey, buy gold, buy gold, buy gold. Now it is. There's an in-game menu for it. Totally different vibe. So yeah, WoW, WoW token does make the game pay to win. Whereas before, I mean, it was, it was like punishable and it wasn't facilitated by the developer of the game. Happening. Now, how do players take this? Not well. <laughs> In fact, the only positive thing I could find about Warlords of Draenor seems to be the Joe Rogan trailer. <laughs> like I said before, after players saw how little content the expansion really had, subscriptions fell so far that Blizzard just stopped reporting them altogether. To this day, no one knows the official subscription numbers because of how bad this expansion bombed. Well, it's... This is kind of nuanced. I think I think it's one, the sub numbers got really low and it's a bad look. And so we're going to stop reporting them. But also 
Blizzard's job is to maximize money, not necessarily maximize sub numbers. Maximizing subs is not always maximizing money, which is what they, that's the goal. We got to maximize money. And this is at a point in the game where most of the income, most of the money they're making is actually not from sub, sub numbers. It's from in-game microtransaction purchases, buying mounts and whatever the fuck. And so, um, WoW tokens and whatever. And so, I think, I think Blizzard has actually very intentionally made a decision over the last couple of years, last 10 years, that, hey, listen, um, we, are, we are comfortable bleeding half of our audience because the audience we do keep is spending two or three times more money than ever, right? So they have targeted the whales. A lot, a lot of people that have quit WoW over the years, they're like, listen, I don't like these microtransactions. I'm leaving. As far as Blizzard is concerned, that player that's leaving is only worth $15 a month because they were paying a sub fee, but they weren't spending anything else. The whales that they have targeted in exchange, they're paying the sub fee, the monthly sub fee, but then also maybe $100 or $200 a month on top of that on all the microtransaction bullshit, character transfers, name changes, in-game mounts, whatever, whatever, pets, and all of that. Blizzard's making money, and I think that they have intentionally targeted that money-spending demographic. This expansion was terrible. Almost all of the tier list videos have this is the worst. Then something new happened. Oh my god! Uh, oh my god! Fire! Oh my god. Oh, fire! Oh, oh my, my god. See, those subscriptions, they just kept falling. Not good. And falling? It's over. And falling? It's over. Until this guy loves the office. Shut up. What the hell? This emergency. Oh. Okay. Okay. Okay, so in an act of what looks very much like desperation, Blizzard goes back to the drawing board and mm. basically tries to recreate all of these expansions while simultaneously trying to forget these. Which causes mm. them to bring Illidan back using the magic of plot and drop one of these sickest trailers they've had in a long time. I mean, everything about that trailer is just mwah. It was so good. So it has to be good. It was good. Right? Well, the answer is yes, because Blizzard pulls out all the frickin' stops. They bring back Burning Crusades. Ill you want to know something? I, I, th I think when, when people remember Legion, they remember the second half, like the ending of Legion, but they don't really remember the first half. The first half of Legion was like pretty rough. It was pretty rough around the edges with legendary luck and mythic plus farming for your, for your artifact weapon. Like it was really rough around the edges. Definitely, I do think the second half of Legion, it was good. The second half of Legion actually was good. It was a good, good second half, a strong finish. Illidan. They add a new Demon Hunter class like they did in Lich. They the add new artifact weapons yep. to let players yep. craft iconic Warcraft weapons for themselves. They add the giant and beautiful city of Suramar to explore. And because the Burning Legion is back, they add super cool invasions that happen sporadically in the world that anyone can take part of. That was such uber ponage. I mean, this was one of the first uber. expansions I ever had. And like, I remember going in, you'd see the invasions and the everything was just sick and as you, you felt like you were part of something and it was like it, it felt awesome legion is sick so it's not a shock whatsoever to see that legion sells 3.3 million copies in a single day well i mean like le the the legion story i think it had a story and a lore that made sense you're back on azeroth you're not on a different planet or in a different timeline you're back on azeroth which is where world of warcraft should be You've got the cool, iconic characters. You have, you have strong, masculine characters that are doing strong, masculine things, which is what a lot of people like. It was, it was, it was like, I, th I think Legion was probably the thematically strongest expansion that there had been in, in the last three expansions, probably. Proving that World of Warcraft was not only back, but it was safe once again. Finally, Blizzard devs could see their families again. They did it. Our world is saved! Except, despite how much Legion did right, and believe me, it did a lot of things right. World of Warcraft was turning 12 years old, and with all that age came a lot of bloat. 
overly complicated systems dedicated yeah. to the most hardcore players, an yeah. influx of microtransactions in 20 different currencies, and social features being somehow eradicated in favor of more accessibility. In an effort to achieve more accessibility, we kind of removed some of the reasons why you needed to um, play with the same group of people over and over. You see, the direction okay. Blizzard started mm -hmm. with Cataclysm and through other expansions had finally caught up with them. Their audience was no longer the same audience that they started with. Yeah, I got the laptop in the car so I can load it on the way, in all honesty. Because at this point, it looked like they had completely split into different directions. And some of those people started asking questions. Uh, uh -oh. Have you ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions uh -oh. as they were then? No. And and by the way, you don't want to that to do that either. You think you do, but you don't. We did. Turns out we did. We did. Battle for Azeroth. Woohoo. Now I'm not gonna lie, straight up. Battle for Azeroth is probably the most forgettable expansion ever. Like, like it's easy to forget that it even happened because with with Wad, it was like so so bad that it was memorable, right? It was it was so far worse beyond anything else. That's why it's memorable. BFA is like second worst probably, and it's just like totally forgettable. I don't know. I don't know telling your most dedicated customers at an event that they paid to be at that they were the ones that were actually wrong it's a bold strategy cotton let's see if it pays off for them but despite blizzard's response of knowing exactly what's best for the average world of warcraft player they also realized that maybe they did stray a little far from the old days of alliance versus horde you are azeroth's true guardians yeah seriously though Here's the deal, man. Uh, if there's no racism in World of Warcraft, I'm just not into it. Okay, I need I need to be I need to be racist to orcs. I need to be racist to trolls. I need I need to be racist to fantasy races in game. Never in real life. You know me, not in real life. In game, though, I am a, I'm a staunch racist. And if the game doesn't foster that, if the game does not facilitate that then frankly, I'm just not that into it. Sorry. Who greenlit that? <laughs> so yeah. with Battle for you Azeroth, can't even spit on their anymore. idea True. is, and please stop me if you've heard this before, to go back to what made Warcraft, Warcraft. I mean, look, even the cover art is a reference to the original Warcraft games. Yep. But I'm not gonna lie, there's something I just don't understand in this situation. See, after 14 years of expansions, the Alliance and Horde have overcome the world ending like seven times. They killed a Lich together, a Demon Hunter, a Lord of the Rings character. They Dude, you ever imagine, imagine just being like a random nobody farmer in the World of Warcraft Azeroth universe. And it's like every two, every, you're just trying to grow your potatoes, right? You're not a hero, you're not a champion. You're just like a farmer with a kid and a wife and you live in Westfall or whatever, right? And it's like every two years, it's like, oh my God, there's another Doomsday Apocalypse again. Oh man, thank God we solved that one. Wait a minute, again? There's a, now there's a dragon, and then there's a guy raising a demon army, and then there are fucking timeline shifts, and we've got orcs coming through the portal again. It's like, oh, ugh. They figured out end. time travel. Oh yeah, and a god the size of a planet and stabs, this guy the, stabs world the world with his sword. Yeah. Which yeah, by the way, that happened. So I guess my question for the whole bringing back yeah, the man. alliance versus horde hating each other thing would be, why? 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 Our responsibility is to bring joy and fun Racism. to people around the world. Now, normally I disagree with Bobby, but when combining the pitch of this expansion with the hype that Legion built, Battle for Azeroth sells a record-breaking 3.4 million copies in its first day. That's so clearly shocking. people wanted this because Battle for Azeroth not only becomes the fastest selling World of Warcraft expansion ever. You know how they say if you're a heroin addict, you know, using heroin is never gonna be as good as the first time you do it. Okay, like, and you're like, you're like chasing that dragon. That's the term they have for it. You're chasing the dragon. That's the entire, that's the World of Warcraft player base. You know, a new expansion comes out. 
You want it to be good so badly. Please, it's got to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be so good. And then it is not good. And then it's like, well, you know, I'm just going to pick a number. Well, patch 9.1 is going to be good, though. I know 9.0 isn't that good, but 9.1 is going to fix everything. It's got to be good. And then it comes out, and then it's like, ah, oh, dude. Uh. But 9.2 is going to fix everything. 9.2, everything is going to be perfect. And it actually sucks. 9.3, though, 9.3 is going to fix all of it, and it sucks. Well, 10.0, the new expansion, is going to be awesome. 10.0 is going to fix everything. And the cycle can, continues, and it never ends. And I'm saying this. I've been there. We've all been there. We all know everything I'm saying here is true. It's all true. We're chasing the dragon. We're chasing the World of Warcraft dragon. Made, but it also becomes the fastest selling PC game ever. Except Whoa. nothing about this expansion made any sense. <laughs> because aside from the initial pitch, everything was lame. And if we look back to what worked before, then technically Battle for Azeroth shouldn't even be working. The leader of the Alliance went from the sickest looking dude I've ever seen in my life to someone I can only guess does not like the touch of sand. It's coarse. Mm. Rough and irritating. Yep. And it gets everywhere. The leader of the horde is now a frickin' banshee that commits genocide because the equivalent of a rude comment. And when she's cool. finally confronted no, cool, by though. an army, she just kills the main guy while everyone else watches and then somehow pulls a team rocket by blasting off again. Cool. <laughs> So yeah, nothing about this expansion makes any sense. The story feels forced, the community's more split than ever, the leads are basically Looney Tune characters, and the game was true. the most bloated it had ever been. There had to be more to the story. And it turns out, there was. You see, World of uh -oh. Warcraft subscription numbers get leaked for the first time since Draenor. And let me tell you. Oh boy. It's not good. You see, Battle for Azeroth oh may God. have brought in sales with a great pitch, but it also dropped World of Warcraft subscription numbers to the lowest point in the game's history. The players had spoken. They really? weren't happy. And if Blizzard wanted to keep the game alive, they'd have to do something drastic. You know what the drastic thing is? Cookies and cream is actually mm -hmm. my all-time favorite dessert. Mm -hmm. But I stand, understand that for some of you, your favorite flavor is vanilla. And you know, they sent him out here as a humiliation ritual. They said, J. Allen Brack, you're the one that said you think you do, but you don't. You need to do it. You, you have to announce it. There it is. Wow. I mean, to go from the guy who said that everybody else was wrong and that they knew the answer the entire time, only oh, wow. to be that same guy on stage giving them exactly what they wanted. You don't want to do that. That might be one of the most embarrassing things I've ever seen. But I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that players were A-OK -okay with that. Feels great. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know, in 2019, Blizzard brings grown men to tears by doing the unthinkable and completely reviving the original World of Warcraft exactly we as it so was back. in 2004. Which is insane. Oh, I started tearing up. I really did. And I, I barely heard sh about the new expansion because the only other company i can think of that's done anything like this is the halo guys and we saw exactly how uh runescape hello runescape did this in 2013 in fact runescape kind of set the precedent with this that turned out didn't we It still hurts to this day. But this was a way bigger deal than most people thought. Because for the very first time in World of Warcraft history, players could actually compare what Classic did versus what Retail did without any of the magic of nostalgia. It That's wasn't right. some theoretical member berry anyone could shrug off anymore. Dude, I I remember this is this is around the time that my streaming career kind of started kicking off. I started streaming in 2017. It was actually because of the Classic WoW announcement in November 2017, I tried to become a streamer and YouTuber, or I started to take it more seriously at least. And so this is when I started having my come up a little bit. And dude, I remember my, man, it was awesome, dude. 
Leading up into Classic WoW, there were so many people that were saying, listen, yeah, it's going to come out. Whenever it comes out, you're going to realize that this game sucks. It's all nostalgia. Everybody's going to quit within a week. Classic WoW is going to be dead on arrival. You're going to get to level 23 and realize that leveling takes too long and it's going to be dead and it's too boring and you don't even have flying mounts. You know you don't have achievements, right? What's the point in playing WoW if you don't have achievements? Blah, 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 blah. All of them were wrong. Every single one of them was wrong. Because the difference is we were right. Were clear. You see, when and it came to classic, right. World of Warcraft didn't feel yes. like a game to players. It surprisingly seemed to come off more like an early social network with plenty of earnable accolades to show off your hard work. What got you the role in Twisters? Yeah, I see why you got the role. Whereas retail was kind of the complete opposite. It was a mess of microtransactions, confusing plot lines meant to pump subscriber numbers up, and 20 different underlying gameplay systems tailored to multiple highly specific groups of people. Yeah. It's just simply not something I'm not interested in anymore. Seriously, retail yeah. had to maintain the pet battle fans, the garrison fans, the artifact fans, the PvP fans, the PvE fans, the mount fans, the flying mount fans, and raid fanatics who were yeah. obsessed with playing the game with hundreds hundreds of screen cluttering add-ons. Like honestly, I, I, I'm just amazed that the Blizzard devs are still alive, quite frankly. <laughs> Except here's the real kicker. It really wouldn't matter which version anyone liked more because Blizzard decides to support them all. Mm -hmm. If the developers barely saw their families before, it was about to get a lot worse. In 2020, Shadowlands brings the Lich King back, only to be killed instantly so his helmet can open a giant portal to the afterlife. In 2021, everyone calls in sick again to experience the Dark Portal one more time. In 2022, Arthas returns despite what Shadowlands just told us, and Dragonflight creates an entirely new audience. In 2023, Blizzard confuses everyone once more by making yet another version of Classic. And in 2024, they join the Battle Royale craze seven years too late, bring back Benedict Cumberwing, and also drop the War Within expansion as the first of an upcoming he didn't six even year trilogy hardcore. that acknowledges the giant sword-shaped elephant in the room. Mm. You see, the game just keeps going. This is one of these difficult things as a, as a WoW streamer, right? Like, I, I remember in the past a couple months ago, there would, there would be times where I have a new person follow the stream and they post something. They say, hey, I'm looking to get into World of Warcraft. What do you think I should play? And it's like, well, there's like eight versions of World of Warcraft now. You have Classic Era. You have Classic Hardcore. You have Season of Discovery, you have Classic Cataclysm, you have Retail, and I'm on, I'm probably forgetting one or two. I got, so, there, so there's five, right? There's five. Oh, man. I don't know what you should play. I don't know. Hardcore. Go play Hardcore. The real question we all want to know is... Now why? 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 The most obvious answer has always and will always come down to money, which when we do the math is kind of hard to argue. Assuming you played from the day that the game released, bought every expansion and never missed a month of subscriptions, you would have spent around $3,667.60 or when you account for the 20 years of compounding inflation, $4,968.38. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to defend this here, okay? So over this is over 20 years compared to almost any other hobby you could have going to see a movie in the movie theater, you know, playing any other game on Steam or series of games on Steam, you know, like collecting Warhammer figurines or like like what whatever, <laughs> doing drugs. <laughs> I don't know whatever you're doing, going to the gym and buying protein powder, like whatever, right? I, th I do think World of Warcraft is actually a relatively cheap hobby. I think it's pretty cheap, all things considered. Assuming you're not buying you're everything what? on the shop and a bunch of WoW money tokens. isn't the cause, it's the result. Because the real answer is much simpler than that. Looking back, World of Warcraft is at its best when it focuses on core MMO gameplay with a grounded Warcraft story players can experience together. And it's clearly at its worst when it focuses on everything outside of that like gimmicky systems, monetization, or endings that bring a smile to Disney. Yet at the heart of every good and less good expansion has always been the exact same thing. People.
the people. people who lined up hours at a midnight launch just to play early. Waiting for the uh, World of Warcraft expansion. <laughs> This, this has been one of the most terrible changes in World of Warcraft. And like, I don't even know if it's Blizzard's fault. Like, the, well, Blizzard has facilitated this to some degree, but it is the devaluation of the human element and the commodification of individual players, right? If you log into retail right now, or Cataclysm, classic Cataclysm, people don't matter. People are a commodity. You know, if you're queuing a, a LFR raid or a random dungeon or whatever, it, like it doesn't, like the... The people might as well be AI. You don't really talk to them. You're not really forming friendships. You group with them and then you toss them aside the second you don't need them anymore. And it's it's like you're you're playing an MMO, but it's like not really an MMO because it just doesn't matter. You know what I mean? And that is the that's the direction the game has gone. But I, like I'm not I'm not actually gonna peg that entirely on Blizzard. Most certainly they have facilitated that with a lot of the you know like LFR and Random Dungeon Finder and stuff like that. Yeah, sure, but that's that's just kind of the way that society has gone and our culture has gone in the last twenty years. People were more social and kind of cared about each other more in two thousand four than in two thousand and twenty four. Right? People just kind of don't really care about that anymore i don't know about forming those connections who collectively called in sick to go through the dark portal with everyone else so tonight i'm gonna buy it go set it up and play all night long who started friendships with a simple wave who screened leroy right. jenkins <laughs> who bought this specific mouse or built an overly expensive pc only to play this specific game you see it all comes down to people Blue collar workers, white collar workers, celebrities, moms, dads, or people who use table salt to protest $25 mounts. Okay. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe that was just asthma. You see, it didn't matter if you liked cookies and cream or if you liked vanilla, because World of Warcraft was never just a game. You know, like, sure, it's a job, sure, you know, we got a company to run, we got a product to put out, but. That's not the point. Uh, I got like seven of my friends in a while. I, my ex-girlfriend, I got ex-girlfriend. Emphasis on the ex. Without the community, ex-girlfriend. WoW just wouldn't be what it is. I love WoW. I'll always love WoW. I love World of Warcraft. I will always love WoW. WoW was like a huge part of who I was. I am a WoW Andy through and through. It's a place people yeah. can call home. I'm a simple man. Okay. I love World of Warcraft. That's where I met my husband, actually. Got a lot of memories attached. Hold up. What was that? Can I, can I find that frame? The Grand Dames, and we play games. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. My husband actually got a lot of memories attached to it. <laughs> and I go back to it all the time. So I'm going to play WoW. I'm gonna go home for the heck out of this thing. It's that simple. We're all kind of united by this space, you know, that we spend a lot of, a lot of time in, and that's a very special thing. As long as that door stayed open. I think you're going to be seeing pictures of me in this for quite a long time. <laughs> It'd always be unstoppable. Hell yeah. Thank you guys so much Hell for yeah. all of your support. If you like this video, then you're definitely going to want to check out how Call of Duty became unstoppable next. As always, you're beautiful, you're goose-tastic, and keep it cute. Now we can finally play the game. We are goose-tastic. Oh, yeah. Okay, can he add eyes of the beast? That was, a, that was a great video. That was a really good video. I think he did a pretty good job of recapping kind of why things went up and why things went down. I think, I think really, you know, it's very popular to just be super doom and gloom on Blizzard. And I, I, sir, I am. I love to doom and gloom on Blizzard. Society has changed. Has changed. Uh, gamers, the preferences of gamers have changed, right? Like I remember when... When the first shop mount, the the Rainbow Unicorn or whatever, the Celestial Steed was added to the game in 2008 during Wrath, there were riots in-game. People were protesting and marching through the streets of Dalaran saying, we don't want this in the game. And now, you know, it's like everybody loves the WoW token. Everybody, like I see people on Twitter, they get excited. Oh my God, there's a new mount. Oh my God, it's only $25. Like they get excited about it. They love it. They love it. And so, you know, society has changed. I don't know. People have changed. Preferences have shifted. And uh, if you're if you're one of these like kind of old school boomer, old school MMO type of guys, you are an endangered species. We are, we are an endangered species.
we are not the majority. We are the minority. There's a reason. There's a reason why there's not a lot of. It's like, man, why doesn't anybody just make a good MMO like Vanilla WoW? Why? And it's because like no one. It's not really what the market wants, you know. Like, and also it's not what makes the most money either. And everybody's trying to make money, and it's not going to happen because MMO players maybe like us. I'll say that we're we are difficult customers. We are incredibly hard to please, and also we don't spend money. And so it actually kind of makes sense why people like us are not catered to, because we bitch and complain endlessly, and we complain on the forums, and we whine on Twitter, and we make YouTube videos, and we protest in the streets of Dalaran, and we whine. And then also, we don't spend money on frivolous stuff. And so... You know, I can actually, I can understand why Blizzard is like, you know what? <laughs> Screw these people. <laughs> We're not making games for those people anymore. We're going to make games for the 85 IQ person that has a bunch of money somehow. And they're, and they're willing to, you, actually, you know, you want to know something? There's the myth or the stereotype of the whale and they have a ton of money and they're buying everything. This is kind of like depressing. I think a lot of people that are buying all this like useless shit in video games, cosmetics and mounts. I don't think these are people that have a ton of money in real life. I think I think it's people that are recklessly spending what little money they do have. Maybe they're going into debt. I think they're I think they should not be spending their money in that way. I think that's got to be most of it, right? But Anyway, back on point. This was a really great video. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And I'm going to have a link to this video in the description. So go check it out. 